Hello and welcome to my second session on code versioning using Bitbucket. So in this, in the previous session I have explained why do we need versioning at all and its different advantages. Also uh, I went through creating user account along with the Bitbucket team projects along with repository as well as one empty branch. So if you haven't gone through with that previous session so please go through with that before uh, moving on to this second session so that is the prerequisite uh, for this, this session so in this session we will try to commit our local code onto the Bitbucket cloud so we'll have some local code I mean when we develop our when we build our when we implement any new feature we uh, in general will we use Bitbucket, we, we, we use Sublime or Eclipse. So that code gets stored locally. So uh, when we uh, do setup for Eclipse or Bit, uh, Eclipse or Sublime, uh, in, initially we define some workspace. So that workspace is nothing but a local directory. So in this session we will try to uh, push or deploy that local directory code onto the Bitbucket server. So, and this can be done using command line as well as uh, some other kit client. So, in this uh, demo session, I'll be using one of the very popular kit client source tree. There are some other kit client as uh, like yeah, Tortoise and, and and some other. But uh, as, as you know, uh, source tree is very popular and it's, it's pretty slicky as far as its UI is concerned. So it provides us a nice UI where I can just uh, commit my code by this point and click. So uh, let's kick things off uh, here. So uh, first of all I need to install a git client source tree on my machine locally. So for that I need to go to uh, source tree official site. So just need to uh, go to source tree. Here you will find source tree free, free kit and edge client. Or Mac and as as I am working on uh, Windows operating system, so I'll be downloading this uh, this software for my Windows. So I'll be I'll click on download for window. When I click on this, it will automatically uh, download one exe file for me so once the dow download is completed I just need to execute this exe file so here I do not need to uh, do any um, pardon fast thing just need to accept the default and it will install source tree for me okay so once this installation is completed, I I just need to go to the source tree and just need to open it up. So when I open this source tree, I'll see one file or tab at the top of the at the top of the header. So I'll just click on file and will click on clone and new. So uh, by using that. I use. I'm, I'm, I mean, in the previous session, we have created one repository on the Bitbucket cloud. So, in this session, I want to clone that repository from remote to the local. So, so are you clear that we have one repository uh, remotely on the Bitbucket server that we want to clone in my local machine? So, for that, I go to the I open my source tree, go to the file and clicked on clone and new. So this opened a new window where I need to provide my source URL that is remote repository destination where I want to store my um, code locally and name of that repository. So but prior to that I need to verify source tree with my Bitbucket account. For that matter I just need to click on a remote account and I'll I'll add one more account 
uh, I'll add my account uh, to this source tree. So just it will open up a new window where I need to provide authentication. I can uh, authenticate this with OAuth as well as Basic. So OAuth is a, another way of authenticating your any application, but here I'll be using Basic. And I'll provide my username. Username is nothing but uh, the, what account we have created in the in the previous session. So in that session, we have uh, so it selected one username. So it will ask uh, me for my password, my Bitbucket username and password, which we have created in the my in previous video. So just click on login. It will uh, verify. If my authentication is successful, I'll be able to click on OK. Fine. So I'll click on my this new account. Here you can see a uh, system automatically fetches that uh, th these are the repositories associated with this particular username. So I have only one repository, this one. So I'll clone this locally. So I'll click on clone. As soon as I click on clone, system it starts fetching that code from remote to the local. So you can see here, as soon as I clicked on clone, it uh, auto populated this remote URL. And here I can um, provide my local path where I want to store my repository. So I would store this. Uh, in the document folder and I would provide name as jtaram whatever default we have so I would just click on clone so it would start cloning my repository on the local machine this is done as as we have very little code on the on the remote side so here you can see we have a remote section branches section and file status. So in the remote section, we'll have all the branches remotely and in branches we have checked out branches. So here we have one concept of check in, check out. So check out is, 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 is a git specific term where that means fetching uh, code from remote to the local. And check-in means pushing your code from local system to the remote system. So here you can see we have two branches, head and master. So these are the default. Master we have created, head I don't know what it is. But if, if let's say we have multiple branches uh, on the remote side, but when we clone any repository system by default check out only master branch so from from here you can also create a new branch let's say my second branch one minute eh? So let's say if we want to create one more branch, I just need to go to branch and let's say my new branch. Branch is nothing but a separate path for development. So as you see this branch is created locally, but if I want to push this to the remote repository, I just need to pull, uh, click on this newly created branch, right click on it, push to an origin. So it will ask me what, which branch I want to push. My new branch and remote branch would be my new branch. Okay, I just click on push. And when I go back to my, uh, my Bitbucket user account, I can see I have three branches. Okay, so here you can see I have three branches, but one of them is in bold font. That means that is my working copy. So here you need to understand one logic. Very simple. So 
we cloned one repository from remote to the local but that repository can have multiple branches locally but out of them one can have a working working branch so let's see if I make some changes in that repository or in that file so those changes would be corresponding to my working branch so it's, it's so yeah you will get let get to know when we try to commit our changes so don't don't be confused so if we uh, take a look at the ui you can see we have three tabs uh, at the bottom of this my source tree one is file history log history and search so file history is nothing but what what changes we have in this current context so this till uh, till date we don't have any modification in my repository so I'll just click on open in Explorer so it will open my local directory so we just we have only one readme dot file which we have created when we uh, created our master branch on the remote side so here what I'm doing is I'm creating one test dot txt file and in this file I'm um, just this is my first file okay and I just click on save so as soon as I go back to my source tree I'll notice that one file is there so here you are, you can see there are two sections one is the stills section and the other one is the unstills so as I explained earlier that first we will so in this slide you can see first we have already installed git then we have already cloned the repository on my local machine and the next step is checking out the required branch so you can see that we have only uh, at the time of cloning repository we had only one branch that was master so by default system um, checked out my master branch later on if anybody wants to clone my existing repository then in, in, in that case my remote would have three branches one is the master and the two created by me so for for that particular user he needs to check out those two branches which I created recently to get, get hold of those branches okay I was, I was I was explain I was talking about this stills file and unstills file. So the stills file is is waiting to be staged. I mean uh, I don't know about the architecture of source but we can uh, make assumption that there are some area some area defined uh, by Git or source tree. So we need to push our local changes to that area then that is still in locally so they have they have some specific memory where they want to store those files so for that matter we need to stage our file first so we'll click on so here this says it is it is not track my I mean that means this is a new file so when I click on stage selected so it would be staged so I mean this is ready to be pushed and here I can uh, provide my comment what comment I want so when I be commit uh, when I deploy this file to Bitbucket server at that time the, the other user should know what was the change or what was the file description so we can provide description here so I this is my new file which was created to implement blah blah feature so that my colleague get to know that why I have created this file so my my local my my uh, current branch my working copy is my new branch so as as I push this changes so this change would be committed to this my new branch so that is this that is the that is this uh, 
um, I mean that is the specification of having a working copy. So if my my second branch was the working directory, in that case, this change would be committed to the my second branch. So here uh, you can see my working branch is my new branch. So here you can see uh, I have one uh, checkbox push changes immediately to a remote. But uh, we have two options. If we want to push those changes remotely or we can push those, we can commit to changes locally and later on by end of the day we can commit to changes remotely. So uh, here I am not committing those changes immediately to the original. So I will click on commit simply. When I click on commit, here you can see we have one push. So push is nothing but committing those changes remotely. So as soon as I click on push, it is asking me where do you want to push those changes. So I am, so my new branch is selected by default, so I will click on push. It looks there are some issues. So as you can see this commit is successful. This is my new file which created to implement blah blah feature. So if I go back to my repository, so here I can see that this was my repository. Here and here I have my this particular branch in this is my commit. This is my commit. This is my new file which created to implement blah blah feature. So if I see my source, so view source, so I have two files. One is the readme and the second is the txt. So in the same, same fashion, fashion, we can, uh, this is my um, sublime, so we can uh, copy this sublime workspace code and put it, uh, put it my put it in my git directory and which was which is the source tree workspace so that it can pick that changes and we can we can push those changes to the remote server so this is uh, something that we have to commit our changes to the remote so in the so this is my second session for code versioning. In the next session on the code versioning, I will explain one handy tool which will, which can help us to associate my my Sublime workspace to the source tree workspace. So in, in this case, I need to first go to Sublime workspace and copy those files and need to paste it in my Git directory and then, then only my source tree would be able to pick up and, and, and would display in the staging area and then need to stage this while I need to commit and then push but uh, we have one code, code com, compare uh, beyond compare uh, compare tool so through that tool we'll uh, we'll using point and click will uh, put will pick files from the sublime workspace and put in the source tree work, git, git workspace so we will not do manual the job of uh, of uh, putting for picking files from uh, git from sublime workspace and putting in source putting in source tree so this is all about uh, for this session so if you like my video you can comment subscribe to my channel I'll be posting more and more videos like this okay thank you for watching okay bye bye I and, and, and one more thing I also created one blog so you can go through with that blog blog where I also provide all the step-by-step -step processes okay thank you